uh, is it good that a scientist will uh, detach themselves and just mm. come up with the research and, and scientific advice? Yeah. Not if it's politicized. That's a catastrophe. I'll give you an example. Um, you see, the um, never, never in the history of medicine have we cured the common cold. Um, and so the first thing is coronavirus is in the same family as the common cold. So if you have a scientist who's now being given significance when nobody would have actually even looked at them sideways before, um, who's now talking about this new disease and how to control it and how difficult it is, and therefore what measures we need to take, they're quite, they'll quite happily gas on about the unpredictability, how many times it will mutate, uh, how impossible it is to actually control. So what measures are possible would be have to be absolutely draconian. So we have to be locked in our own bedrooms wearing masks indoors. They'll quite happily gas on about that if they're given any significance. But the point is, it's irrelevant because you're dealing with something with a mortality less than influenza in those who are under 70 and healthy. Yeah, so but if it's not, not well, if you started the global narrative by saying, oh, here's an illness, which, yes, it will kill people, but it's more so does colds, so does walking across the road. And if you if you have a mortality less than influenza in the healthy under 70, um, are you prepared to destroy life as we know it and cause innumerable deaths from uh, not going to hospital, from stress, from loss of uh, from loss of um, work and livelihood people will just laugh at you yeah I'm, I'm, not, I'm not coach... disputing any of that uh, what mm. I'm, I'm looking to say is i mean they uh, you say they become they are irrelevant actually they're not they become irrelevant if the majority if the majority listen to them which doesn't make it right um because right. if the majority listens to them, they become relevant but the thing is just because the consensus agree on one thing doesn't make it right if science is telling you something else the consensus, the, the, consensus, to tell you the consensus doesn't make it true. If the, if the world believed, or ninety percent of the world believed that the world was flat, it makes people who are saying that relevant at that point in time. It Absolutely. doesn't make it doesn't make it right if science if science proves if someone proves otherwise. But it seems that because of the media, because of the narrative, because of the everything that's been said there, it's people are going with the consensus. Hence the reason. That wokeism, for example, is so apparent now because the consensus, particularly of the, I don't know what generation you'd have probably used the baseline as to when that started, um, are, are believing something which for, for some of us in our, you know, in, in uh, over the 40s category, probably find quite bizarre way of thinking. Mm. I'll get, also give you an example on the pressures. Uh, I, I mean, last year I was interviewed by a minor um radio channel and uh, about about corona and what i thought of it and what the government were doing and uh the interviewer uh s said uh, can you be a little bit more controversial <laughs> and and i said i'm really sorry but you know i can only say it as i see it um but that's me okay i don't care whether i get interviewed again or not but there are plenty of people mm -hmm. And don't forget, what you need to understand is people get paid for a lot of these interviews too. Yeah, yeah, um, and there'll be plenty of people who'd be quite happy to sing for their supper, just as in court, expert witnesses uh, employed by both sides will come up with, with uh, polar opposite opinions. And then you have to figure out who's, who's the crooked guy massaging their opinion to suit their... Um, the person commissioning the report. Actually, it's interesting you say that because something did come up um, earlier in the week about Fox this is News. Interesting. Yeah, about, your... yeah, about Fox News. Because the thing is, um, because something that seems to keep on crumbing up is people are willing to compromise their principles and 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 follow and follow the trend if it actually if it actually benefits them. So it's it's about self interest. But there was this lady I, I can't remember her name for love nor money. Uh, and, and it was on Fox News, and she'd been an anchor at Fox News for about 30 years. And she just resigned <laughs> because she was getting sick and tired of actually spewing out information 
that was filled with half truths and lies and things like this because the media is about making money and so so she, she so it was a conflict of her principles so she gave up a career of 30 years and a salary and a safe job um because it it, it actually went against the values in effect um Presumably she which, had which was earned to, enough by then sorry she probably had earned enough by then but the but 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 the fact that she's actually being the fact that she actually decided to do it and maybe maybe it's that stage in her career wants to spend time with kids there could have been a number of reasons why she did it but it would be good well, her best that inter- more- no that's the point but I, I do take your point that she did come out with it uh, which yeah. which you know credit to her i guess um yeah, but you could you could also argue that you know uh, going back to your previous point about you know what is what is seen or what is the narrative is what is said before when we didn't have social media we had newspapers and I remember back in the day when we only had newspapers and I would hear my parents saying well look it's written in the newspaper it's printed so it must be true uh, and, and 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 I think I think that scares me it, it, the news media Fox News and all the big media outlets have always created their own news or at the very least going back 30 40 years ago created their own angle on the news that they decided was supposed to be newsworthy in that moment there is a ted talk but now it's completely created they create their own news there's a ted talk on uh, exactly this Mm -hmm. on journalism and news yeah and uh the lecturer showed a global map and and uh basically it showed that 97 percent of what was being reported on uh did not relate to what was actually going on in the world no no I'm well, we, we, we've had this discussion probably a couple of years ago in terms of mm. what the media pushing out there, because yeah. when there were newspapers, people actually had time to do the research and uh, and be able to come up with some sort of accuracy, even though that they'll probably they probably you know the power use the power of the pen, but because social media and everything and as everything's coming up and news is like last what twenty four hours. People don't have the time to do the research these days, so they put it out there, um, which is which is if you think about what what social media is doing and how and how it's influencing people and what news that they're actually putting out there, it's it, it's you know there if you look at what the American elec- the U.S. elections, it actually influenced that. Now we actually had that in the U.K. in the past because one you know if it was a Rupert Murdoch. Yes, the media magnet. I yes. mean, basically, he influenced what the general election was in the UK when Tony Blair got in. I think the the newspapers like the Sun, which was the most, which was which had the highest readership in the UK, um, flipped onto flipped onto that side. Yeah, um, so, yeah, Andy, you're sorry, you're mentioning accuracy. I I, I I I would go just beyond that word context. When I remember, I mentioned this on a couple of podcasts ago, when I came from the Czech Republic and I started to watch BBC News for the first time in five years, and they were starting to report on the coronavirus, the first question I asked was, okay, how does how do these amount of coronavirus deaths relate to other illnesses? How, uh, in terms of how are they defined? So how the coronavirus deaths defined? Is it purely on coronavirus? Or is it you've just had it and you may have had it when you went to hospital? For example, where's the rounded, non-one-dimensional argument? There is none. It's a a one-sentence soundbite that is out there because it's trending. It goes, as you said, it disappears in 24 hours and something else replaces it. And all we do is hammer the same point home, but it's the the one who shouts the loudest is the one that's heard. But then there's too big to fail. See, that's yeah, the other. I mean, look, here's the thing. I mean, I, you, most people know my feelings about the BBC right now. As I say, <laughs> if I didn't actually have to, uh, I, I find it. I find it very hard to stomach that I'm paying a TV license, um, which ultimately no. funds um, a narrative that I'm not necessarily agreeing with. Um, because the thing is, they are very selective on what they actually put out, and I find I, I find the BBC very left wing in that respect. And but the thing is, they're expecting everybody to pay for that service. Um, and when they say, "Oh, yeah, the BBC website's different to BBC Television," actually, that's where no. they get their money from as well. It's all it's all interconnected. Okay. So yeah, so I I do struggle with the BBC and what they put out. I mean, I was watching the whole. I was watching some of the interview with um, Nicola Sturgeon, 
as oh. what happened up and what happened up in Scotland. The other... How is that going, by the way? Is she? Is she? Is she presented her? Um, side of you know, they, they said she yeah. came. They they said she came across very well. The, 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 well, once we went to look to the BBC report afterwards, they said she came across very well, and she and and mm. she was comfortable with that after eight hours. I've got to be honest. I only I was only I only watched it for about forty five minutes, if that. But every time I actually heard her answer a question, she avoided. I there was a, um, an, a there, there seemed to be an evasiveness about her. She avoided eye contact. She stuttered. And if you actually had like a body language expert, that could lie. Um, I'd probably that they'd probably have good cause if they actually measured that. That for me, she didn't come across as as very credible in what she's saying. I think she was looking to save her own skin. Yes, she's a politician. Yes, she's been trained. Yes, she's articulate um and, and impressively articulate and i will give her that Actually, yeah, but I, I found that her body language was very very evasive um, no, and, 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 yeah, and yes and, the bbc and, said she came across really well and no she so didn't i i saw you it watch too. it as well she was she she actually came across as, as aggressive as well um which again you know you'd wonder why is she being aggressive and what i mean by that is um she said oh yeah no, he was definitely acquitted, uh, but I can tell you now, his behaviour is entirely unacceptable, uh, and he showed no no remorse. But it's irrelevant. you know, at the end of the day, if someone is falsely accused of something, are you going to be remorseful, or are you going to be very, very, uh, unbelievably angry? Um, you know, I, you know, anger trumps remorse any day of the week. I hope her husband helped her because he happens to be the. What position is he in the uh, in the Scottish government? Oh, the CEO. Oh, and allegedly, oh, really? he, yes, he is, and he was implicated in this whole saga as well. But that's not been mentioned, is it? Oh, that would imply that that reporting is 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 is, is unbiased and is correctly and professionally done. That's right. Oh, but the fact that he's a CEO and he actually writes all the scripts and prepares everything and manages everything is irrelevant. So I think the bottom line is her interview was up. Her her uh, eight hour session was either from your report stuttering and looking uncomfortable or being aggressive and none of that uh is someone who's cool calm and collectively telling the truth yeah, but if we no. go back to if we go back to leaders i was speaking to my colleague yesterday sorry in um a company i work from watch Tech, and she doesn't really follow politics it's not really a she's not really that interested and the moment we talked about nicola sturgeon you know when somebody is marmite i have not met one person who actually has said oh, actually i like her Everybody said, oh, she's evil. Oh, she looks like a bully. Oh, she looks like a complete, absolute uh, she's disagreeable. psychopath. Mm. You she's know, when, 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 she, when, she did the, when she did the te TV debate with, um, I think when uh, David Cameron was actually running for election the second time and, and, and won the prime ministership the second time, I, I was, I, I've got to say, I mean, I didn't like her. I don't like her politics. But I've got to say, I admired how she came across on television. Um, Confident. Yeah, she was confident. She was articulate. She was, you know, she, she, she was, you could listen from her, you know, she, she was, she was great. And, and another guy who, who was the same, and I didn't, I hated him, actually, was a guy called Bob Crow, who was the head of ah. the transport um, union. I remember him. Um, <laughs> you know, who caused all those things many years ago in terms of all the strikes we had. When he was on question time, he came across as very articulate. But when you actually look in contrast to how Nicola Sturgeon comes across in those things, highly confident and, and very well, um, and, and there was a certainty about her, there was a total contrast to how she behaved in this last interview. Um, she came across as she was stuttering. She never she she avoided eye contact. It wasn't in control, Andy. That's it wasn't. It wasn't. So if she's if she's if she's she to talking to people, if she's you know if she's giving her reports and so on, she that her danger. You're right. Is she's articulate, uh, but still, but but has her own uh, purpose. But only when in delivering one way. Only in delivering in one way. That's right. It's a bit like. Uh, uh, people like um, James O'Brien and Piers Morgan, they're, they're articulate, but they're, they're, they're both entirely self-serving. But she and can't so, cope with so confrontation. She, she can't cope with the, with the, with the two-way... She can't cope with confrontation no. because she's generally disagreeable and only cares about her own opinion. And not in control. And for instance, the, the idea that, um, you know, she's still... Her entire raison d'etre is Scottish independence. 
So what does she do? She uses COVID to, as an excuse to, to shut off the, uh, the border to Scotland. <laughs> now, you know, how idiotic can that be? And then she tries to use the EU as another excuse to segregate Scotland from, yeah. from uh, England as well.